first of all, I was explaining to Mika that you and I, whenever we were in Congress, before we go vote on the floor, we call each other, <laughs> saying, yes. hey, Hey, yes. Jim, what are you wearing today? Yeah. And you'd say, I'm wearing a smart like sweater it. set. Yeah. Boots. I put one on. Yeah. Yeah. You guys look great today. I just want to be like you, Joe, and don't oh. want to wait until I grew up. Oh, no, no. No, that's too so, funny. So let, let, let's, let's talk uh, about um, what, what we all saw yesterday. You know, as you know, because you've been talking about it, we've been through a pretty rough five or six years as a country, especially... Absolutely especially on issues of race. Um, but yesterday, we saw a black vice president who's a woman mm -hmm. announce a vote to send a black judge to the United States Supreme Court wow. the first time ever. I'm just wondering, given all the challenges we've had, what does that moment mean? Oh, it meant so much to me. I have three daughters, uh, two granddaughters. Uh, I um, really sat down with, the, with them two years ago, a little over two years, and I asked them what were the undercurrents floating around out before the South Carolina primary. Mm. And one of the things had to do with the Supreme Court, the fact that no uh, black woman had ever been seriously considered and uh, there were four women that had been on the Supreme Court. What's this about, they would say to me. And that's why when I sat down with Joe Biden to tell him that I planned to endorse him in the South Carolina primary, but I thought it would be helpful mm -hmm. if he made it very clear that if given the opportunity, uh, he would break through that glass ceiling. He made that promise, and he's kept that promise. And he nominated, and we have now seen confirmed, an outstanding judge who I think will be a magnificent jurist. And he made that promise in Charleston, South Carolina, yes. uh, meaningful for, for, for so, many, so many reasons. I, I'd love for you to also talk about this moment for those too young to recognize how much has happened in this country just in the past 50, 60 years. See, I, I, I don't even, I can't even understand it myself because of American heroes like you. When I started first grade in 1969 in the outskirts of Meridian, right. Mississippi, I started in an integrated classroom. Right. But for the life that you've lived and so many black Americans have lived, talk about the arc. Of, of what you've seen in your lifetime and why it's so important now to move past what we've seen the past five years and continue moving toward a more perfect union. Well, I'm glad you put it that way because we're not trying to say to people all the time that when we look at these things, we have to see the glass as being half full rather than half empty. And the problem that we've had in recent years, I think, is that everybody wants to focus on the glass being half empty. If we do like John West told me uh, when he gave me a little lesson early in my career, he said, when you look at that glass, you see this being uh, half empty. When I look at that glass, I see this being half full. That is because of the differences in our backgrounds and our experiences. And he sent me back to my office and said, let's see what we can do to continue filling up this glass. Wow. And so that's what I think we have to do. There's so much has been done. This president uh, has passed the Rescue Act. He's done uh, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. We have a magnificent, uh, you know how hard it is to do the appropriation right. bills. Uh, we've got a record set in the appropriation bills. And so uh, the glass is being filled up. And we ought to focus on what we can do next to fill up this well, glass. And the judiciary, the judici judicial nominations. I mean, President oh, Biden is moving at, at such an important clip. And there's diversity, and, and a great diversity, which follows up a president whose idea of diversity was getting old white men, uh, moderate-aged white men, sure. and young white men as prosecutors and on the federal bench. It was Trump. Absolutely. Trump. It was. It was overwhelmingly. Yeah, White absolutely. Mail. The Supreme Court on yesterday is just uh, another step uh, in that uh, trek uh, toward a more perfect union. Look at the uh, appeals code judges. Look at, he's done what, 11 African American women uh, to the appeals code uh, over the years. That equals 
all the others put together before him. Wow. And so I think it's just fantastic what this president is doing, and that's where we ought to keep our focus and stop saying, well, he hadn't done this and he hadn't done that. He hadn't done a lot of things, but he's got three more years if we uh, just work with him. Congressman, to Joe's question about the scope of history. Sure. When you were in the late 60s working around Orangeburg and the massacre at South Carolina State, when you're working at the Charleston Hospital strike and all the things you did, could you have ever seen this day a black woman on the Supreme Court? Yes, I could. My mother told me when I was a teenager, you stay in school, you study hard, you stay out of trouble, uh, you can see your dreams fulfilled. So sure, uh, I saw this. Eugene, uh, it was an extraordinary day, a day for history without question. It does, it does put into focus, though, the process which is that, you know, Joe was talking about Sandra Day O'Connor getting as many votes as she did. And now these are 52, 48, 53, 47 votes. It appears to be, if you listen to people like Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, just the way it's going to be going forward. No, it does. Republicans have made it very clear that they're not really looking to work with President Biden on mostly anything, and even a Supreme Court justice nominee, if he gets another one, because it's possible that he could, right? Um, it is possible that the Senate's going to be Republicans, and if Mitch McConnell is the majority leader, how long he's willing to hold a seat, um, we've seen that he's done it before, and it's he's signaling that he would do it again. And you have even Republican senators who are saying this process is broken and it's not working and we don't know how to make it work at this point. And that should be concerning for Americans who just want to see Congress do what it's supposed to do. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. And I'll say my, I'm also from South Carolina. My family is both from South Carolina and um, talking to them and the, and the black women in my family about what it meant to see that. My grandmother's 84 years old, grew up in Bucksport, South Carolina. None of you ever heard of it? <laughs> None of you ever heard of it. Believe it or not, yeah, yeah. you heard of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, talking to to them about when she was growing up, her mother taking a bucket with them when they would go in public because the bathrooms were so disgusting. Okay. She'd rather them use a bucket than to use the bathrooms that were releg they were relegated to, mm -hmm. and for them to now see that. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, watching young black women, older black women, see what's now possible in the country. That is what like, yesterday was, and we'll hear President Biden, Vice President Harris, and the upcoming justice herself. She'll be um, sworn in later on this year, but talk about that around noon today. So that's something that I think the White House is very excited about. And just, I mean, an aside, though, for, 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 for any of the American people who felt Trump was a threat to our democracy, it was the black women in South Carolina Absolutely. who saved it. Absolutely. <laughs> so I mean, in there South, is that. It really is incredible. In South Carolina, you can go up to Wisconsin. There's black women in Mil Milwaukee County, uh, in Wayne County, uh, Michigan, uh, in, in Philadelphia, in, in, in Atlanta. It, it, it is just, it's, it's remarkable that, and we've talked about this before, but it was the very people, the very Americans who were kept away from the pursuit of the American dream for the longest mm -hmm. that were actually the people up. that stepped in and saved, and I love the irony here, saved Madisonian democracy, saved Jeffersonian democracy for themselves, for their children, and again, now this yesterday. And that's what this is all about. Yeah. You know, uh, that's why I keep bringing up my mother. Yeah. Uh, I talk about my dad a lot, but my mom's had a tremendous faith and confidence in the country. And mm. uh, she did everything she possibly could. Now, she was a big fundraiser for the NAACP, yeah. the NAACP Woman of the Year, and all of that stuff. <laughs> and it's all focused on laying that foundation uh, that I'm pleased to try to do what mm. I can now to that's further amazing. for my children and grandchildren. Mm. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.